right, I would like you guys to put your practice in the back of your math journal. Just slide it in somewhere in the back of your math journal. Math notebook, thank you. I want you to open up to a new blank page. And mathematicians always put what on their page? The date. The date. New blank page. Have students making good decisions, labeling their page with the date. We're going to start with our objective. Go ahead and point at our objective. Let's read it together starting at our goal. Ready? Our, our goal is to apply addition and subtraction strategies for actions to real world problems, as well as discuss the reasonableness of our answers. All right, go ahead and write your goal. The top of your page, go ahead and write your goal. thinking look like? Thinking. Show me thinking. Pencils down, eyeballs here. Thank you. What does it mean we're going to apply our addition and subtraction strategies for fractions to real world problems? So you're thinking about that. What is our goal? Talk to your table partner. What's our goal? What are we trying to do? What's a real world problem? You don't know? Like a problem, like say that there's like four kids in a group at school or something like that. So something that would involve kids in a group and a situation, a story. Yeah. Well, thank you, those of you that are showing me they're ready. I'm gonna grab my stick. Jennifer A. Thank you, Adriana. What does this mean? What did you guys discuss? Um, that we need to um, add and subtract um, our fractions and um, make them into a word problems. Make them into word problems? So you guys said real world problems are word problems? Okay. Angie G, what can you add to that? I can add that we could find, well, yeah, we could find strategies to find a way to make it easier for us to do, to add and subtract fractions. So you're going to use strategies to make it easier to add and subtract fractions. All right. Identify who's the superhero, who's the villain. Who's your superhero, who's your villain? Thank you, Oscar. He's showing me his ready. Thank you, Josiah. We're going to do two teacher-student pro teacher problems. Superheroes, raise your hand. Superheroes, you are going to teach... Four thirds minus five sevenths. Superheroes, what are you teaching? Four, four thirds minus five sevenths. You're going to use your whiteboard. While you're teaching, you are doing and saying. What are you doing while you're teaching? Doing and saying. If you're the student, 
You're listening and watching. What are you doing if you're the student? Listening and watching. Okay, students or villains, you get to tell your superhero which strategy you want to see. So, villains, you get to choose what strategy you want your superhero to teach you. Right now, superheroes. Go ahead and teach your villain. Go. So, I want to teach you multiplication. These two numbers, and that's um, the numerator? No, you, these ones. Yeah, the numerator. Yeah, the numerators. Um, and that is. Okay. 13. Four. Three. And then 21. Go ahead and hold up your strategies and kind of pan them around so your classmates can see what strategies were used. Pan them around so your classmates can see what kind of strategies were used. I have a couple superheroes that were still working. That was okay. All right, board's down. Show me thinking. What strategies did you see out there on the boards? I think I saw two of them. Table two, make a better decision with your bucket, please. What strategies did you see out there? Talk to your table partner. What two strategies? You're getting a razor. Calm down. Jeez. He was moving around. Table one, what's one of the strategies you guys saw? They said they saw area model. Table seven, what strategy did you guys see? We saw the multiplication strategy. What do these two strategies do? What's the purpose of doing these strategies? What are we trying to get here? What does the area model give us? What does multiplication strategy give us? Think about that. Thank you, Brisa. She's showing thinking. What is the purpose of those two strategies? Talk to your table. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So how do those two strategies help us? They help us by getting the denominators the same. What is that called? Common denominators. These two strategies help us find what? Common denominators. All right, villains, you ready? Yeah, you ready? <laughs> villains, you are teaching one fourth plus nine eighths. What are you teaching? One fourth plus nine eighths. What strategy do you want to see? Go. What strategy do you want to see? We have two strategies. What strategy do you want to see? All right, he's looking for multiplication. You listening and watching? So how come you didn't multiply four by four? Because you multiplied eight by four here. I got the eight. I got the four. For the denominator, the other denominator. What's your new common denominator gonna be? What's the new common denominator gonna be when you multiply those two? Sixteen. Sixteen. Four and eight. Four times eight. Do you have an idea? Four times eight? Four times eight. Thirty-two. You guys agree? All right, keep going, teacher. So what you did is you take the four, eight, put it over there next to the four and times it by eight. And then you took the four and times it by eight, nine. And then, and then you added those up, which you got and um, uh, an improper fraction, so you minus 32, so you minus 32, which is 4, and then you got 1 and 4, 32. Did you have your student explain to you what you did? No. Who was the teacher? But he just explained it. That's an excellent teaching strategy. No. Yeah, he was ex Yeah. You did it, and then you explained? I kind of explained it to you, and then she explained uh, it, and then I I to review it. Oh, can you summarize it? Okay. Uh, four, eight, so half of one, two, one, two, three, four. Yes. Okay, hold on. Forty-four. I don't know. Are you doing it correctly? What strategy are you using? Your partner asked for number life? Your partner has to determine what strategy to use. Or to turn it into a chocolate factory and that this number is So you're doing one fourth plus four eighths, right? Then you have to count the whole thing. What's the problem on the board? You have to, um, so four is a whole. And then you have to count 32 all the way to 44. Oh, and then you have to count 32 all the way to 44. How much that is? I think you got a good strategy started. So you have to subtract. But you gotta think about is it reasonable? So you get 12, so that's 12 out of 32. Five? Five? Three? Two? Thank you. Alright. Now, these two down below, I'm going to ask that you do with your fraction partner, okay? If you look over on the math focus wall, identify who your math fraction partner is. I know it's Carson. 
questions on who your math fraction partner is? Angie? Is Seth with you and Lee? Yes, Seth is with you and Lee. Angel? Um, are we going to keep those um, as partners? Temporary. Oh. All right, you're going to solve these two problems with your math partner. You guys are going to take turns teaching each other. When I say the signal word, you're going to get together. You're going to do the same teacher-student model. Reasonableness. Reasonableness. It just makes sense. showing your student. They've got to see what you're doing, too. Hopefully we get a video. Oh, the video. What if we get a video? Okay, and it's like. Okay. Did you look? Go back and check. Angelica just checked. But it's going to be one and three times minus one. Thank you, those of you that are standing so they can see me. When I say the signal word, I need you to quietly return to your seat, and I want to check in real quick. Reasonableness. Reasonableness. It just makes sense. Bye, my partner. What did you guys say? Thank you, Max. He's showing me he's ready. Thank you, Kaylin. All right, looking at the bottom one for superheroes, three plus one and one fourth. What did you guys get? Uh, what, 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 what? Seventeen fourths. Seventeen fourths. What else did you get? Uh, what can you just do with fourths? What can you just do with those two whole numbers? I had them. And then you would get what? One four and one fourth. Four, four and one fourth. That one was easy. Yes. All right, looking at this one. One and three tops minus two thirds. Oh. I'm going to show you the area model, OK? And I know the area model might not be the most efficient strategy, because I'm looking at this, and I'm going to have to draw 12 partitions in my area model. So I'm going to represent this with my whole, OK? And then I need to show my fraction. Thank you. All right. I'm going to try to make my model as precise as possible. So I'm going to start by partitioning it in half. The halves into halves, which is now fourths, going into, oh wait, that's not going to get me to 12. Hmm. Now, Stinger was going half, fourths, eighths. What would I would have gotten to? What would I have gotten to? Uh, really? 
halves, fours, eights. If I partition them in half again, sixteenths. That wasn't reasonable, Miss Tinker. So I am going to start with half, and then I'm going to make sure that I have six spaces on each side. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And three of those are shaded. One, two, three. Okay, and then I'm going to represent my other fraction. I have two thirds. Yay, that one's going to be a little easier. Okay, I'm going to go the opposite direction. I went horizontally, so now I need to show it which way? Vertically. Vertically. And how many are shaded? Two. Two. I have a predicament. I've got one and three twelfths minus two thirds. What can I do here? What do I need to do? Think. I've got my three twelfths partition. I have my two thirds partition. What do I need to do? Talk to your table partner. What do I need to do? Cut the twelves into thirds and then cut the thirds into twelves. Right? What do I need to do then? <gasps> Vertically into and that's going to get me what? What am I trying to do? I can't solve those because they have different denominators. I need what kind of denominator? The same. What's another yeah, word for that? We need equivalent denominators. No. Okay. So my predicament that I talked to you guys, some of you about, I have two different denominators. I can wait until I have eyeballs up here. I have two different denominators. What do I need, guys? Common denominators. Common denominators. Common denominators. Okay, so our strategy was I'm going to lay the partitions from this one onto this one to now make a common denominator. And then I'm going to take these partitions and put them onto this one. Okay, so I'm going to have to have 11 space, or 12 spaces with 11 lines. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, now. I'm finding that this strategy for me is not as efficient. I think what I would have rather have done is just do a quick common denominator strategy, but I now have all the work that shows that. What is 3 times 12? Think. What is 3 times 12? Can you leave those on the table, please? Talk to your table partner. What's 3 times 12? 36. What's my common denominator going to be now, guys? 36. All right. So this is going to go below that line. That gave you a name for it today. It was the vinculum. So I now have 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 36. And then how many 36 would I have here? Think or count. Oh. Eyeballs should be on the board. How many 36 would I have there? <sighs> How many 36? 24. 24-36. <gasps> I've encountered another predicament. I want to take 2436 from 936. Talk to your table partner. What can I do? I need 
what? And then add it to 936. Which is, um, with it and so the one in 936, so I might need to change that into an improper yeah, fraction. Five and then, you and then, you yeah. then I can add it? Okay. No, no, no. Don't, don't, don't. I can't add it? Actually, no. Give me some fractions, add it, and then make it not a fraction. Interesting. Yeah. All right. I know that I can take this whole and say, instead of one, I'm going to call that 36, 36. Why does that make sense? I just took one and I renamed it as 36, 36. Think. Why does that make sense? Talk to your table partner. Why does that make sense? <laughs> I'm hearing your conversations. I heard you say 36, 36 is equivalent to a whole because there's 36 total pieces and we have all 36 of them, so that's really one. So I'm going to add those together to get my new fraction of 45th, 36. And now what can I do with my 24, 36? What can I do with it now? Subtract. subtract it. Go ahead and subtract it on your whiteboards, guys. What is 45, 36 minus 24, 36? Do you have room? Oh, I keep waiting for Maybe you need to erase. Mm -hmm. You can borrow this real quick. You can just show me your work for that one. You can hold it up, compare it with your classmates' answers. Are you comparing it with your classmates' answers, or are you just holding it up? Look at your answer and look at your classmates' answers. Do you see a difference? What did you guys get? 21.36. All right. Normally, guys, we would go over our My Favorite No, okay, where we have some student work that we analyze. Unfortunately, there, I would like to skip this and get to something that I think is a little more in depth and worthwhile. Okay. So, we have our whole class discussion. You're going to use your notebook. So go ahead and have your notebook ready and open. We're going to read the question starting at Mrs. Smith. Ready? Mrs. Smith. Pause. Pause. I would like every student to be ready. Starting at Mrs. Smith. Ready? Mrs. Mrs. Smith used one and three fourths cup of salt to melt the ice on her sidewalk. Then she used another three and four fifths cups on her driveway. If Mrs. Smith originally bought ten cups of salt, how much salt does she have left? Okay. There's a question below for you guys. What is the question asking? Think. What is the question asking? What are we trying to figure out here? Right now, you're going to put 
the question into your own words. What are we trying to figure out? Superheroes. Tell your villain. We're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out. Um, uh, how much Miss Marvel? She, Miss Marvel, how much is she and and how, if she used all of that, how much does she have left? Oh yeah, wait. Thank you, those of you that are showing you're ready. So, what is the question asking? Let me hear from you guys. What do you think it's asking? Angel A, what is it asking? One more time. How much salt is this Okay, so how much salt does Miss Smith have left? And I want to challenge you to put that into your own words. Okay, let's hear from David. Thank you, Angie G. What are we trying to figure out? We're trying to figure out since Miss Smith had 10 cups of salt, how much would she have left that she, she used three and four fifths and one and four fifths? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and write what you said. She started with, how much salt did she start with, everybody? 10 cups. Nine nine cups. cups. Let's be brain alert, please. She started with 10 cups of salt. Okay, David, can you repeat what you said and then I can write it down. I said, she started with 10 cups of salt and then she she, we want to find out how much she will have left when she uses the one and three fourths and the three and four fifths. Go ahead and tell your table partner what David said we're trying to figure out. David said that she had a lot of salt. Yeah. 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 And how much does she have left out of the 10 cups and she put in what she did? Okay. She started with 10 cups. We want to know how much she's going to have left after using one and three fourths and three and four fifths. Okay, same question still, but now you need to come up with a plan. What do you need to come up with? Plan. So think right now. What would your plan be? Seth, I'd like to see thinking. What would my plan be to figure out? She started with 10. She uses one and three fourths cups, three and four fifths cups. What am I going to have left over? What is Mrs. Smith going to have left over? In your notebooks, I would like you to work as a group, and I would like to see solutions for Mrs. Smith's predicament. Go. So what I think is just add the minus because it's just a minus. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Actually, I think we should add the two and three that she's being told to. Yeah, I think we should add the one and three fourths and three and four fifths. And then subtract that. And then subtract that by the ten cups. Yeah. To get our answer. You agree? Yeah. You agree? You agree? Okay. Okay, so we're going to add three, four, and four. Do we have a plan, guys? I know we just did a track. What do we know? Three, four, and five. What do we have to do to figure out how much she has left? Three, four, and five. 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 Three
What did Angel say? So we're going to take both of those numbers, one and three fourths, three and four fifths, and take them away from ten. What is that going to look like? Can you show me? How do you know that, Angie? You add the you add the new flashings and what you get is you have to multiply that. With the uh, uh, new flashings, so you will get the end. What does your group think? Yeah. Josiah, you're nodding your head. Why do you agree? Well, I didn't really hear what she said because you weren't talking about it. Because uh, once you get your new fraction of three fourths, uh, you have to subtract it from 16 to 20, years, which means you have to subtract 15 from 16. Well, you guys are getting into the math, but I kind of want to hear what your plan was. Like, Adriana, or not Adriana, sorry, Angie talked about her plan. Angie, can you say your plan one more time so your group can hear you? Well, it makes more sense if you add the new fractions and subtract them by the whole number, which is 10, and, and then add your whole numbers, 1, 1, 1, and 3, 4, 3, 4, 3, So what's Angie saying to you guys, Josiah? She's pretty much saying, like, that we add our two new fractions. And then we subtract so you're going to add those two fractions up there? And then what are you going to do? Then you're going to subtract them from 10. And why do you want to do that? Because that's our whole. That's how much she bought. So that's how much she started with? Okay. Are we going to do it? Can we show our work? 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. What's your plan? 200. So, I don't know, I don't get that. Why do you want to do that? So what you're going to do with the whole numbers is... No, no. So 3 oh, and 1 equals 4 and you're going to subtract 10 from 4? No, 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 no. First we need to figure out you think she wasted how many fours we have. That's so it's 20, 20, I think she's 40, using it for a good purpose. I don't know if it's wasting it. 20, 40, yeah. 60. Okay. What are you eating? 100. That's already 5 steps. You got at least 100 millimeters. And then you add another five to make it a 10. That's 200. That she started with? That she bought? Millimeter okay. or something, whatever they're using. Do we have a plan? Do we have a solution? Yes. Okay. Go ahead and put yours under solution one. But we're not supposed to, we're not supposed to, um, aren't we supposed to subtract, not add? I did. Maybe when you add, you add the one third and the three fourths. Three and four fifths, sorry. Yes, but it's two and one twenty. Ketchup. Ketchup. Oh, I thought you said ketchup. I'm like, what? What's your plan? So what, we're, what we're going to do is multiply three over four by five over five, which is... Uh, That's your mathematics. What's your plan to solving this problem? Yeah, because I was so confused with what we were doing in the parentheses. Yeah, you can use it. Oh, oh wow. I'm so confused. <laughs> Why are you confused by the parentheses? Because I don't even know what we're doing. We're, first thing, we're doing parentheses, then we're doing addition and subtraction or something like that. It's so confusing. Well, Lee's trying to apply what we did on the math for today, last week. That's going to be the answer right there. But that you can what I did is that times 5 by 5 and 4 by 4, and then I got 6 and 20 is 15 20, which is 13 20. Do we have a solution? Because I would like to have a solution.
Talk, what is your solution, group? Um, we use multiplication and then um, and then we add the new um, answers together and then make it into like because that's improper. We um, add it into a whole and then subtract the new answer from the ten. Go ahead and put yours on the board. So it's one and eleven twentieths, and then and then you have to add the um, the the three and, and the, the one that that the that's three the, and one. That's the answer of how many yeah for cups the, there are for the together. one and three right? the one whole is that your final solution here? No, that's not our final solution. Okay. This is What's your final solution? So this is the final solution. So three plus one is four, right? And then we already got a four, so it, so you change that into a five. Five and eleven points. They didn't understand, so I was hoping. Excellent. Do you have an idea now, Otto? Yeah. Okay. And Didn't now you just need to say that. Yeah. Okay. Nope. Where's your work? Where's your solution? <laughs> Do you have a solution? I'm concerned about this group. I've got one person doing a lot of work right now, and I've got two of us that don't have a lot going on. Angelica, what was your guys' plan? It's one. It's five and one twenty. Is the answer? Wait, I I think it is easiest to do. It's hard because I she has every single one. We have to show Five. Five. Three. If you have solved it one way, show me another way. Okay. If you've solved it one way, how else could you solve this? We're going to start our discussion in about five minutes. I can do this plan. Okay, so since we have ten holes, don't we have to do this? Like what I used to be able to do, but now it's just like confusing because we have the whole and then how do you subtract from everyone? Isn't that a big number? Why not? I don't know, because sometimes when you have like big numbers, it's like kind of weird. I can relate to when I was doing the problem on the board and I was getting 36 as my denominator. But like the line, I got 50 on that one part. And it takes a long time usually. But why did we start with area model? Because we had because we had smaller numbers and not mixed numbers. But what does the area model show you? What how much it is out of all like a visual picture. So it gives you a visual picture of the fraction in reference to the whole? There's no talking from this group. I know your teammate is on the board, but I said if you solved <laughs> if you solved it one way, solve it another. What are we trying to do, Jaquil? What's the problem asking us? <laughs> Let's read it again. Go ahead and turn your chair instead of looking at it upside down. Mrs. Smith used one and three-fourths cups of salt to melt the ice on her sidewalk. Then she used another three and four-fifths cups on her driveway. If Mrs. Smith originally bought ten cups of salt, how much salt does she have left? What is the question? Thank you, Adriana, but Jaquil, what's the question? I'm not asking you your plan. What's the question? Just right here. How much does she have left? And what did she use to start with? Five, four, three, 
to. I have half my class showing me they're ready. What does that look like? Now I have about three floors. Almost a hole, not quite a hole. There we go. All right, let's start with solution one. Who's responsible for solution one? Angie, would you please kindly go up there and explain your strategy and how you arrived at your answer? to the side a little bit. I want to give you guys some think time before we have meaningful student questions or student comments. And I want you to look at our stems up there. How do you know the answer is correct? Can you specify what you meant by you fill in the blank? Can you show your answer a different way? Show me your evidence. So I'm going to give you some think time looking at Angie G's strategy. We're going to have student questions and comments. All right, Angie, go ahead and pick your questions or comments. So what I don't understand how when you did the 21, 20th, 20th uh, because if you add those, you, well, you would, um, like 6 plus 5 would be pretty much 13, then you'd carry 1, and then you'd get 33, 20th. I don't really understand how you got 20, 20, 20th. Okay. So Angie G, where is the 21 20th coming from in your mixed number? It's coming from the 15 plus 16. And is it a 15 of the whole number or 15 in the numerator? 15 in the numerator. We're showing our math, but our math goes back to the problem. How do you know Mrs. Smith has 5 and 1 20th left of her salt? Well, she has 5 cups and 1 cups. So that's how much 
she has a salt left. Okay. One more question, comment. Why did you do the division part? I I showed the division part so it could show my work. So you guys are be confused if I just have to like hold out. Five. I'm going to clarify your question a little bit. What is the division doing with your mixed number? Why did you use division to help you with that mixed number? I used division so I could find out how many 20s go up to 21. So I, and I found out that 20 goes up to 21 one time and 21. All right, nice silent applause for Angie. This way. All right, who's responsible for solution two? Go ahead, Oscar, go up and explain. What I did was I did 10 minus um, one one and three fourths plus three and four fifths. And then since they're parentheses, I have to do it first. And then I wrote the, I wrote three fourths, I turned to the, the numerator and the denominator by five, they got 15 twentieths. Then I did four fifths times, no way. I did four fifths, then I turned the numerator and the denominator by four, then I got 16 twentieths. Then I add um, 16 twentieths and plus 15 twentieths, and I got and that equals 31 twentieths. I can't, well that's in proper fashion, so I minus 31st, oh, 30, 31 minus 20th, and then I got 11, and then I got 5 and 11 20th, and then I had to subtract um, 10, 10 minus 5 11 20th, and then I got 4, nine, four out of 9, no, Okay, thinking time. Think about questions. Where's your final solution? Four and nine times. That's supposed to be twenty. Okay. Thinking, what are some questions that I can ask? And I'm also looking back at, I just got another solution from another student, it's five and one twentieth. Now we're getting four and nine twentieths. Questions, comments for Oscar? And Oscar, I would like to have evidence from the word problem. I don't know if that's what you wanted, Trey. So how does your answer make sense within the word problem? OK, and I want everyone to think about this right now. Because we're doing a lot of math. We're doing a lot of procedural. But we need to really think about it, okay? Our word of the day is reasonableness. What's our word of the day? Reasonableness. It just makes sense. So here, looking at their answers, we need to go back and look at it in reference to the problem, okay? So here's what I'm going to do for you guys. Oscar, thank you so much. And Angie, thank you so much. And I'm sorry, Angel, that we didn't get to yours. But look back at the problem. Let's look at one and three fourths. Show me thinking. What is an estimate for one and three fourths? If I asked you to round that to the next whole number, what would you round that to? One and three fourths. Show me thinking. Show me thinking. Looks like this, looks like this. Talk to your table partner. What would you round that to? 
What do you got around one and three fourths cups to? You're gonna round it to what? You said a whole and then you said two cups. So you're saying this is one whole, and that's one bowl, and then you're going to round it to two cups. Cool. Okay. Five. Four. Three. Two. I heard from table one, they said they were going to take one and three-fourths cups, round that up to two cups. What are they going to round it to? Two cups. Okay. All right, now thinking. We have three and four-fifths. What are you going to round three and four fifths to, nearest whole number? Thinking. What does that look like? Like these, like these. Thinking. Talk to your table partner. What would you round that up to? I would round it up to five fifths. Five fifths, four holes, four holes because I'm going to so much with the Brown is not here. I think she'll be Don't jinx it. Sorry, I need that. Well, we're under a wolf. What do you want to round? Three and four cups to, oh sorry, I said that wrong. Three and four fifths cups to, what do you want to round that to? I have three, four fifths is closer to zero, half, or whole. So three and a whole gets me what? Three and a whole gets me what? Four. So I have two cups and four cups. And then you guys were telling me you wanted to take that from the 10 original cups. So our answer should be close to what whole number? Think. Our answer should be close to what whole number? Talk to your table partner. Eight. Six. But isn't there more to the problem that we have to do? I think that would be like six. Is it the door? Is it? There's a tape. Wait, another tape. Five. Five. Three. I need eyeballs here. I need you to focus on me. You are concerned about your learning right now. So we said we have two cups and four cups already used. We started with 10. What whole number is my answer going to be close to? I'm gonna take 10 and I'm going to subtract this right here. A reasonable answer, reasonable estimate would be around four cups. So I've got a couple different solutions going on. And what we're going to do is we're going to revisit this tomorrow. We're going to look back and see, is our answer reasonable according to the problem? And we're going to discuss the problem when we're discussing our strategies. Okay. So right now, flyers, come see me. There's one flyer. When you get your paper, you're going to put your name on it and you're going to start silently reading it. What are you going to do? Silently. Put your name on it and then silently read it. Okay? Hey, they're not supposed to be PCs. I don't want to do it. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, I did not tell you that. You're on the sinister stand side. What side? Sinister stand. Sinister stand side. Mine? 
Table one, most of them are following directions. Names on it, and they're silently reading it. You just put in a new one. Starting at Sinister Stan. Ready? Sinister, Sinister Stan stole three and three fourths ounces of slime from Messy Molly, but his evil plans require six and three eighths ounces of slime. He stole another two and three fifths ounces from Rude Ralph. How much more slime does Sinister Stan need for his evil plan? Okay, right now, you guys are going to be working in your tables on this. You're going to be working at a level two. And I should hear focus, directed, conversation. Go. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Pieces, 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 Folder. We are going to revisit, and I'm looking for active listeners. 